Scott Jordan, and you are watching live here at Cellars of Sonoma in beautiful Railroad Square, Santa Rosa, California. Welcome, everybody, to TV Tuesday Live. This is the uh, show where we talk about wine, we taste wine, and I get to interview winemakers and chefs and people in the hospitality business. And uh, sometimes I bring uh, my buddy, Russ Wright, who is with me tonight, to go through the tasting. Russell, welcome to TV Tuesday Live, man. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate the invite. Yeah, well, that's because he's, he's really happy because we're going to do cheese and wine. Turn. doesn't get any better than that. No, it doesn't. Cheese is the best with wine. And earlier, uh, just before the show, um, Russ, Russ and I, uh, our wives, had dinner last night, and my wife had bought oysters, and we forgot to cook them. So uh, we co I cooked them up this afternoon, and boy, they were tasty. It's Get them while you can. Yeah, right? They're, and they were looking good. And uh, we'll talk a little bit later about uh, a great event coming up uh, June 29th, which is our lobster lunch. And uh, it does feature, the beginning of that is oysters on the half shell, you know. Oysters, lobster, you can't go wrong. No, right? no, no. I mean, that's, uh, no. you don't want to miss that one, right? No. And then with a nice Chardonnay, got to love it. Um, so tonight, what we're going to do, something real special. Um, as you guys know that are wine club members, or if you're not a wine club member, what are you waiting for? Um, we make a shipment of four bottles four times a year. And um, it's from four different vintners. And so these are, this is the unveiling of the four wines in the June and July shipment coming up uh, this week. I mean, can you imagine now the May is over with? I mean, it's June, man. That's crazy. Where, where does the time go? I just cannot believe how quickly May just blew through. Yeah, half the year's gone almost. And it was cold too, last week on. Yeah, well, last night it was interesting. You know, I, you, those of you from the Midwest and other parts of the country that I always make fun of your weather, <laughs> we had cold rain last night, which is real. Was that bizarre? That was really crazy. That's really unusual, too. Yeah, you don't see that much in, in this area that time of the year. We normally don't see rain. Those of you that don't know, in California, come the end of April, um, you're pretty much done till October. I mean, right? I mean, it's it, it would be a really weird thing if it rained. You know. So rain this time of the year doesn't really affect the grapes though, right? Right, we've, we've gone uh, beyond that, that bud break and so the berries have sat pretty much and so, uh, and that rain wasn't super heavy. The only, the only issue you could have would be if that was a really heavy duty storm where it really dumped, right. then you could probably have some what they call shatter where they've broken some of the berries off. And that creates a problem at the end of the growing season because basically you're going to drop that shattered fruit yeah. and only keep the good clusters. And so most of the uh, growers have insurance for that if that rare occurrence did happen. I, you know, that, that's, a, that's a great question. I don't know that. I, don't, I, don't I, th know I believe I read that in the Press Democrat, the local newspaper, that, that they right? do have insurance that if there's a catastrophe weather-wise, that uh, they don't lose everything. Yeah, but th there have been years when it was touch and go. But, you know, around here, as you know, Russ, you know, we, we've been here a long, long time. And, uh, gosh, the weather is pretty consistent. We're, we're pretty fortunate. Those of you in the other parts of the country, you guys struggle with, and that's why you can't make all the varietals that we can make here. Um, one of the things, before we get too far ahead, I, I, what I want to make sure you guys know that we are up for an award for the best tasting room in Sonoma County, best of 2013. We need your votes. So if you believe that we have the very best tasting room, even if you don't believe it, you got to vote for us anyway. <laughs> kind of like American Idol, you know? Maybe you don't really like the guy, you're just kind of voting for him. <laughs> so um, Karina's going to give you a link that you can click on uh, after the show and go ahead and vote. 
You can vote as many times as emails that you have. So um, if you've got a couple emails, just log in again and, and, and vote. There's two categories in there. We should win both of those, which is uh, best place to buy wine. I'll prove that tonight. And of course, best tasting room. We think we have a pretty darn good tasting room. Corbell won last year. I mean, really, come on. I, I mean, I their their winery's nice, but you know, there were probably another hundred that I would have picked over the top of that one. So um, we want to. We we think we deserve that. I've got a great staff, and I have great customers, and and I'm really proud of them. They do a real nice job, and so I think we we should win that. But it's all it's all up to you. You have to vote. So vote. Often, uh, as many emails as you have, and pr and let the word get out. I want to send an email blast out because we actually we really do want to win that. And if we do win it, um, we're going to have a big party here to celebrate like that. And you guys are all invited, but you have to vote. So uh, vote. And uh, li like I say, Karina will have a little link, and I'll have an email. And watch for the email blast. And speaking of emails, and before we're done tonight, I'll show you the the bottle, the pirate we got in in a Magnum. That's the coolest bottle of wine in the world. Now I got three cases. There's six bottles in the case. They're 18 bottles. They're a buck and a half. Great deal. That is the coolest bottle you'll ever have. If you've got pirate wine from La Serena right now, you got to have the Magnum. And why the heck do you have the other two and you don't have the freaking Magnum, right? No, it's a great gift. If you look at a high school or, excuse me, a college graduate or someone who's getting married, you give them a gift and say, on your 10-year anniversary, crack, crack this open, and you're going to have something that's really special. Yeah, it's not, instead of some stupid thing that they just <laughs> sell at a garage <laughs> sale. <laughs> They'll yeah. have that and remember you every single glass Absolutely. they have. And, and the wine will uh, age really nice in the uh, Magnum. It's a big wine, you want to age it anyway, but boy, that sucker, you probably could put 10 or 15 years on that and not a problem at all. And then you know what they could do? They could get their bridal family back together and all the moms and dads and crack that thing, the, the bridegrooms, and <laughs> that would be a great time. I love that. So uh, a question uh, from the group, go ahead. Uh, what year is the Pirate? The Pirate is 2010, 2010, it and it is a blend of cab, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Petit, uh, Petit Verdot, Grenache, Syrah, and Petit Syrah. So it's... <laughs> you know what just occurred to me, Scott, is if you waited 10 years, do you know when you'd be drinking that? Well, I'd be drinking it... 2023? Doesn't that sound like you're in the future that we should have hovercrafts or something? <laughs> yeah, so maybe you'll be able to drink it on your hovercraft. There you go. Yeah. Or maybe by then we'll have time travel, so then you'll go back in time and then buy another one because you, you were too stupid to buy it originally, right? So you could maybe do that. Well, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Now we're getting carried away. We haven't even drank the wine. Um, <laughs> so um, also, uh, those of you that are tuned in, uh, we have a contest that's been going on uh, for about three years now, maybe even a little longer, uh, where when you come in the tasting room, you do a blind tasting, and when you finish the blind tasting, you get to enter into a contest to win a bottle of wine for a buck. And then we said, well, if we don't have a winner, we'll add a bottle. And so we keep doing that. Tonight we're, we're drawing for four. I'll have Russell pull two names, see if we get an immediate uh, winner. We don't get a winner. Next week it goes to five and it goes all the way up to ten. So um, you, you, you don't want to miss uh, the show, though, because you have to be tuned in to win. And uh, several of you that are tuned in right now, I've called your name before, and you weren't tuned in. And uh, Snooze, you lose. That's the way it works. So Where else are you going to be on Tuesday night? Yeah, right here. Right, exactly, exactly. And it's not like, you know, this isn't some show with a bunch of commercials. I mean, we, we entertain you here. We, we drink wine. We talk about what you like, which is wine. And uh, so no excuse. So anyway, the bag is full. I mean, it's it just chuck full. So Russell, dig in there, man. Uh, oh boy, he, he took them right off the right off the right off the top there. Well, there's the two. He got two. Though. We're gonna pull two anyway. All right. So Ashley Barna, Ashley Barna, a two one four area code. Ashley Barna, B A R N A. You have won four bottles of wine for four bucks, but you have to be tuned in to win. What's the next one here? What do we got? 
Okay, this is Chris Napier. Napier. Chris Napier, 801 area code. What's that, Bay Area? Is that like No, the... I think that's Los Angeles, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's probably, yeah, you're right. We always get so, stumped by these, I know. these area codes. We should have a list of them. That's right, we should. We, my, my, our, our guests will be looking that up. Chris Nap Napier, uh, you have won four bottles of wine, but you have until the end of the show to give us a call. And uh, if you don't, well, then, you know, what can I tell you? He comes five next week. Yeah, exactly right. And yes, Brad, I know you're, you're salivating as it gets closer to 10. You know, Brad's won <laughs> like five times. Um, all right, so tonight uh, we're, we are unveiling the wines in the wine club shipment. Russell's a wine club member as well as one of my best friends. Uh, we've been friends for 33, four, a lot of years, right? I mean, long time. A long time, man. Um, and uh, so in the shipment this month, starting June and the uh, – for the first sips club and then our other club which is the cellar club ships out in july and the same wine we've got up first we've got uh, 2011 tr elliott he calls this the three roses russian river chardonnay this is a special bottle of wine because number one this is his first chardonnay now ted elliott who's the winemaker and owner of the tr elliott brand he is he is no uh he knows a lot about Chardonnay because uh, he started in uh, Sonoma Couture. And so uh, he made some pretty darn nice Chardonnays. But he's known for his uh, beautiful Russian River Pinots. But over the last three years uh, here in the tasting room, I kept bugging him. And I said, Ted, I want to see a Chardonnay or I want to see another varietal out of you. I think that would really be cool. And he really fought it but he came up with the Chardonnay and uh, we we just absolutely fell in love with it right away so I thought it'd be a great introduction introduction for the uh, wine club uh, in your wine club shipment you get four bottles they're mainly red all year except for the two hot months uh, usually uh, June and September I'll put a Chardonnay in there but it's world-class Chardonnay and this is um, an example of very small production wines, and, and I mean really tiny. Seven barrels from one single vineyard. Seven barrels is all they made of this wine. Um, and we talk about this every week, about the um, scarcity of these wines. And I keep warning you guys, and, and you, you, you keep missing these cool opportunities. Um, for example, the, the uh, 2007 Bono Syrah that we have retails at 48 we've got it at 20 bucks a bottle on six or more done deals over you missed it you just can't you're not going to find these wines anywhere on the planet I and mean, that wine does not disappoint right we had a bottle last night because scott's smart enough to buy some because scott knew then yes it i have a case and a half left and if anybody wants to buy you got to do it right away if not the game's over but that's a great example how cool is that bottle of wine for 20 bucks russ that's a heck of a price point, and it easily should be worth three times that. Yeah, it I mean, was a great wine at forty-eight, and it was and it was a bargain at that price. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, Chardonnay, um, and and I thought it would be fun to pair up with cheeses, and I'm kind of talking to my uh, red wine drinkers. I keep trying to get you guys to move into some of the white wines and learn how to appreciate and enjoy them. And one of the ways you can do it is with cheese. And so what we've done is uh, from the uh, Matos Dairy, a St. George, George, a St. George cow cheese, it's, so it's cow, um, is what we're pairing up with the uh, Chardonnay. So if you're not coursing your meal, so you're not going to you know, have four courses with four different wines, use this as an appetizer. And this, this cheese would work really well. So in your local market, look for a St. George uh, cheese, or a try it, with the Chardonnay. That's the way it's done right there. That was delicious. And uh, a shout out to uh, Oliver's Market. Uh, those of you that, that's our, that's not a national chain, that's local, right? No, that's, yeah. That's local? Yep. I went to the national chain, I won't chain today to get these cheeses. 
and I had specific ch cheeses that I wanted. And the other organic, you know, place that's supposed to be the great didn't have one, not even one of what I was looking for. Nor did they even have a suggestion, which I thought was interesting. And then I went over to Oliver's, and the gal over there just rocked the house, man. She didn't have all of what I had on the list, but she said, well, wait a minute. With that wine, you go here. Well, the best thing about Oliver's is that they support all the local farmers. And if you go in there, most of the products are all local made. All right, so T.R. Elliott, seven barrels. Retail on this is 32. My seller club, you get this at 2720. Really? A single vineyard, single vineyard, seven barrels. Um, and Ted gets to really work in that vineyard and get, get things correct. That's an outstanding Chardonnay. Right? Isn't that wonderful? That That's is. a great Chardonnay right out of the, right out of the barrel. Um, and speaking of barrels, 30% uh, new oak, surly aging. And here's what we mean by surly aging. Um, the, the, they do the first fermentation in the steel tanks, then they transfer that juice into the barrels. They stay in the barrels uh, about 11 months. And every month or so, they open up the bung, and that's the top of the barrel, and they stick this, looks like a broken putter. It's a spinner thing, and they stick it in there, and it spins and stirs up all the leaves and sediment in the barrel. And they leave it in there because it really imparts additional flavors into the wine. You don't want to filter that out. You want to leave that in there, but you want it to ex expose the juice. And so surly aging is done on this for 10, 11 months. 30% new oak. Um, that's a very expensive pros proposition. As, as we've talked before, the barrels, for the oak barrels for um, French oak, uh, they're north of uh, 1100 bucks. That's a lot of money to spend. Now, I mean, you only did seven barrels, but still, that's a big investment. Oh, absolutely. So, right? Out of seven barrels, you know, two of them were, were brand new, and the, and the rest were maybe one- or two-year-old barrels. But that's, a, that's an expensive program. And, uh, but what a beautiful, look how clean, what a beautiful, beautiful Chardonnay. So if you're looking for that uh, uh, hint of oaky and, and buttery, it's got a little hint of oaky buttery. But that cheese, this, this uh, again, that's the St. George cheese. That really works well. What do you think? Ron did a uh, little investigating on the Maddox cheese creamery, and uh, the family is originally from the Azores in uh, near Portugal. Oh, was that right? Yeah. Wow. Did you learn anything else from that? Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> from the Azores. <laughs> Well, that's good. That's good. Well, you know, we're really fortunate here in California. We have probably the best local cheeses. I mean, they're just everywhere. It's, it's incredible. Um, except for at that other chain that didn't have the cheese. I just couldn't believe I got shut out, man. I thought for sure I could have gone to that other place. And then I called your wife, and she said, go over to, and see the little gal over at, at Oliver's. They do a great job, and they're always letting you taste the cheeses. So She did, too. That yeah. was the other part was awesome, man. She just got her little wire thing and cut it up a little deal, and, and, and every one of those, she was spot on. But, and we're, but we're going to find out how good she is because in the Pinot, that's the next two wines are Pinot Noir, um, we've got two different styles of Pinots, and I've got three cheeses. That we're, that we're, I'm not sure which one pairs best with that, and you and I are going to figure that out. Sounds good. We'll, we'll wire that, and you guys will get an email uh, with the, with the, uh, the uh, names again to the cheeses so you don't forget. Well, I hope Ted is watching this broadcast because yeah. if you are, Ted, that's a home run. That's don't an outstanding that wine. A, that's a beautiful, right? Beautiful. And again, I, I, I'm really talking to my red wine only drinkers. I know you're like freaking out going, ick. Oh, a Chardonnay. Get it. All you have to do is get a little cheese, right? And that you don't even have to. You don't even have to make it part of your course of your meal. You could sit around out by the pool, have a little cheese, and the the balance is what you're looking for. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah, and and a great price point. Uh, retail at 32, and if you're stuck on the retail side and you don't want to join the club, I, I'm okay with that. Just keep buying wine. We make more money. But if you really do like the wines. Um, Get with the program, you'll get these great selections. So, 
Uh, selection number one, Chardonnay, coming out uh, June for my first sips club and July for the seller club. Also, too, we're going to, uh, there'll be an email, but we're going to have a uh, pickup party at Donaz property. Oh. Up on the hill up there in. in that's uh, beautiful property. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those, it's one of those majestic places where you're, you're, up, you're up high enough where you can see the whole valley. Yeah. I mean, literally, right? I mean, it's the whole damn valley up there. It's really nice. We're going to have a barbecue. And uh, that's a free event for wine club members. Ten bucks, and you can bring uh, your friends for ten bucks. That's the, a deal. You're going to taste uh, all four of these wines, and uh, I'm going to cook some chicken and stuff. I'll have my buddy Russ will help me again, and uh, we'll, we'll cook some food and have some fun, visit the vineyards. and Hopefully I don't burn the house down like yeah, I almost did at Jeff James. <laughs> <laughs> it was going. It was going, man. Oh, man. It, well, you know, I... I, I bought chicken with skin on it. I normally don't, you know, I usually, you know, pull it. But I I like the flavor that it imparts, and then you can take that off of it. Sure. I think it, you know what I mean? But, boy, you got to really watch it. It gets, then that, that, <laughs> he had the biggest barbecue, too, man. That was a big sucker, right? It was good. And we had. Smoke, flames, I had it all. Yeah, he had it all. It was going good. But it was delicious. That was fantastic. So that's coming up uh, probably the second week in June. I'll get an announcement out tomorrow. And then um, Lobster Lunch is coming up. Uh, throw a flyer up there on Lobster Lunch. You guys, I'm just telling you, if you're in the area and you don't go to this, don't complain. I'm just telling you, it's, it's a pretty cool event. You know, when you think about it, what is, what's the cost on that? 95 bucks, I think? If you're a wine club member, you get that for 95 bucks. If not, it's a buck, uh, 115 But it starts out with oysters on the half yep. shelf, similar to what we had today, but the smaller version. The Miyagi's. Yep. Um, from from uh, uh, what's the name of the oyster? Coos Bay. Uh, no, it's the other. It's the other one. But anyway, awesome uh, uh, oysters on the half shell, and then artisan cheeses like we have here, and then a vineyard tour is included, and then while we're doing the vineyard tour, they're cooking in big pots: lobster, shrimp, artichokes, potatoes, onion, yeah, corn on the cob, <laughs> sausage. <laughs> And then they just dump it out on the table. I mean, how bad is that? That's crazy. I think that uh, you go to a restaurant and you're not going to get a meal as, as extravagant as that. Oh, and then no. have the outdoor location, have the wines. I mean, yeah, you gotta you gotta remember too that's all inclusive, so you're not paying for the wine either. You, Ninety-five you can't. bucks. I'm saying, can't no, do it. Yeah, you can't. A lot of times your dinner is going to be 125, 130 per person. Yeah. And that's not even factoring all the wines. And we're talking just amazing wines. Uh, this will be at James Family Cellars, so we'll feature all of their wines at that location. And then the other one, if you can't make that one, we have one August uh, 17th, August 17th at Dunau, and uh, up in that beautiful property up in uh, uh, up in Fort, I mean uh, Sebastopol, up on the hill. So, so don't forget about those events. That's going to be really fun. And then uh, before we get done tonight, I'll talk a little bit about Summerfest, which is coming up. That's one that uh, yep. uh, Russ and, and his wife help out on, and my wife runs that gig, and uh, that's cool. That, we'll, we'll talk about that, because that's pretty fun. It is. You yeah. have music, you have crafts, you have wine tasting, you have food. It's got everything. How do we sleep? I don't have any time to sleep. There's so much going on. Okay. So in the wine club shipment, two Pinots. Amorosa Bella. This is their Russian River Pinot Noir 2010. And then Dunaz 2000, as it stands right now, there may be a change to this. Um, as it stands right now, it's going to be the 07 Russian River Pinot, but I may switch that up to the San Giacomo if it's available on the 2008. So there may be a slight change in the Pinot, but for our purposes of tonight, what we want to do is we want to see how these two different Pinots, they're both from Russian River, but different vintage years, 07 and 2010, which cheese actually pairs up best with the wine. So we want to be real clear on that. Okay? All right. So I'm going to cleanse my palate with a little Chardonnay. Okay. All right. So the, the first cheese is uh, Turok Valley aged goat cheese. So this is goat cheese. 
let's have a little let's have a little taste of the goat cheese, and then I'll taste each of their wines, and we'll see what works best. Wow. Okay. And when you're doing a, a, a food and, and wine pairing, you want to take a little bite of the food, and just before you finish it, have a little bit of that wine and, and let it coat in your, in your mouth a little bit. So take a little bite, and then That'll work. Now, for me, with 2010 works a little better with this particular cheese. But let's go to the next cheese, and then we'll try the two wines, and, and we'll do that through all three and see if we can get figure out which pair is best. So what are you looking for when you're pairing wine and cheese? Are you looking for, like, a complementary smoothness? Yeah, what you want to do is... Mm, well, let me try this again. So that cheese got a little stronger when I took a little bigger bite. Mm. I'm still I'm still leaning toward the 2010. What you don't what, what you're trying to do is get a balance. So you want the the wine and the cheese to kind of work in harmony where one isn't overpowering the other one. There's a lot of earthiness in that 07 uh, Dunaw. That's a pretty earthy wine, and it, it, I feel a little conflict a little bit. But we'll know more when we go to the next cheese and then the third one. Again. But you probably can rule out certain cheeses, either as being not enough flavor, right. you know, bland, or perhaps overpowering like your Roquefort's and so forth, some right. of those. Yeah. That would probably be a little much as yeah. far as combining them with the, with the red wine taste. Yeah, and you blue cheese people, you, you like the blue cheese. So That's I have me. A, yeah, I know. I just have a real issue with the blue cheese. So but, how do you determine the best cheese for the wine that you're looking to drink? Or do you determine the cheese first and then the wine, or the wine first and then, and then the cheese? Well, it, de it depends on what you've already done. So if you've gone to the store already and you've, you've bought some cheeses, then I, would, then I would slice up individually and do what we're doing here to see what really complements best with the, with the wine. And I, and I think that's a, that's a fair way to do that. So the second uh, cheese is the uh, Andante Dairy, and it's a Tumi Tom. Dolce. It's a Tom Dolce. Yep. It's goat cheese. So let's try that one. It's a goat cheese. So, mm. what a delicious cheese! Wow, that's really good. Are these cheeses that you're trying? Are they very pungent, or are they on no, the mellow not. side? No, they're on the mellow side, big time. You just don't want them to be that loud. They'll just so, you don't want them to take over the 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 uh, the wine. Okay. Are you eating manchego tonight? No, well, manchego <laughs> would have gone with anything. Yeah, that was it wasn't on my list. I took the uh, the list. What I'll do is I will uh, make a copy of that and I'll email that yeah. list. It came from the uh, Sonoma County Wine uh, Growers Association. Nice. They had a neat little list of different cheeses that you can find in your local market. That'll go with different types of varietals. So, so what'd you think on on that one, Russ? I thought that went uh, with the wine a little better, and I'm kind of split. I like both those, you know, so those are delicious. Well, they're nice. they're yeah. both beautiful. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's kind of hard. Yeah. They're just nice wines. Yeah, I don't think I don't think either cheese would have been a bad move. With yeah. either one of those. Yeah, I think the second one, though, was my preference there, the, the Tom Dolce, the goat cheese. Yeah, I like that as well. I like it uh, with the Denaw better, a little bit. 
yeah, there's a hint of earthiness that kind of they kind of work together. I like that a lot. Okay, now the third one is a cowgirl creamery, a St. Pat cheese, St. Pat. Now, I, I am not a, a cheese aficionado. I don't, I'm just not, but, you know, I learn as I go. So I'm not familiar with the St. Pat. Um, I'm kind of a simple guy. I do the same thing over and over. That's why I like Menchaco. I just kind of, because it's really simple. But um, this is more of a, of a creamy cheese. This this one here. So let's try Have this. Have you ever one. actually been to their location? Who, who has? Have you? No. At Autumn Point Reyes. It's uh, awesome. No, no, I haven't. It's really cool. Is it cool? Yeah. You can see the cheese being made right there. You walk oh, wow. in to the right of you. They have uh -huh. like a whole thing. You can do a cheese pairing, and uh, they have a little deli. It's really awesome. The only one I've ever been to is the one in Petaluma, where you, where you go out Petaluma. You go out the back yeah. way of Petaluma like you're going to the ocean. Yeah. And that's that called great. something. That, but that's a cool. That cheese is. Joint. They serve quark. I never knew that was cheese. They serve what? It's called quark. 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 Like quark. It's like, I mean, yeah, it's like a spreadable cheese, like a okay. schmear. Okay, so this is a much creamier cheese. Um, I like it with the Amorosa Bella. Um, I like it. I like it a little better with with the uh, with the Dunaw. Um, I, I'm not having uh, an issue with either one of those wines. Um, that's why I put them in in this wine club shipment. You guys that are that are wine club members that are watching tonight. Um, I take a lot of time to figure out what wines we want to put in in the shipment, and I pick uh, based on what's really pouring right now and pouring really well. And darn it, both of those pinots are pouring pretty damn good. You wouldn't have an argue with that, would you? I mean, my God. No, they're both delicious. So, so looking, looking back uh, on the Pinots, let me tell you a little bit more about each Pinot. The 2010 Amorosa Bella uh, Russian River Pinot, uh, $30 retail, $25.50 to the seller to the, uh, club. The other thing is, if you're a club member, when you get these wines, here's what I want you to do. And some of you are making a mistake, and I don't want you to make this mistake. The wines we're sending you in the shipment are samples. You really should treat them as samples. And here's why. Uh, I'll give you T.R. Eliot as a perfect example. He made seven barrels. If you take the, these wines and you lay them down for a year or two, you're going to come back, open that bottle, and you're going to want more, and they're going to be gone. So the wines, unless I send them to you and say, do not open because it's a monster wine that you have to lay down, these are ready to drink and enjoy right now. They do have great ageability, but I want you to use them as samples and then buy additional bottles. We give you an extra 5% discount. So if you're a first SIPS member, you go from 20% off to 25. Yeah. And, and, and then you buy extra wine and stash it. And then pull it out every six months, grab a bottle, right? I mean, that's the... You buy six and you try it every once a year or you see how it's aging? Yeah. And, and, and then you'll have these wines. If you come back to me six months from now, ten months from now, and you go, oh, wow, I really love that wine. Let me pick up a case. Um, I don't have a secondary market. There's no place to go for that wine. I can't... See, in a large winery, they have distributors that are sitting on pallets of their wine before they're out selling it, you could pull some of that back if you needed to to, to satisfy orders. Um, I, can't, I can't do that in these. They don't exist. That's, I mean, seven barrels. I mean, that's just stupid. So uh, please take advantage of what we've got here and it's access to small production wines. And uh, these are samples. That's what you want to treat them as, as samples. And uh, pretty nice samples, though. The sample of two damn nice wines, right? Those are delicious pinots. Isn't that, uh, isn't that amazing? <clears throat> and, and um, you know, again, this is a 07, pouring fantastic. It's a great example of a wine that you can really age, right? 
I mean, I, I think you could put another five years on that all day long. Easily. Wow. So let me give you a little uh, update on what's coming up this week in in wine country. We've got uh, on Friday, I mean on Thursday, we've got Ricky Allen Ray. Ricky will be in the house. Uh, he'll be coming in a little bit later, more at, uh, at 6.30 and go a little longer because of the time change. It's really light out till almost 9 o'clock. And... Uh, so he'll be playing a uh, three-hour set here, great music. John Peters on Friday. And then Dustin Saylor, for those of you that are local that have been visiting the Taste Room over the last few years, we, Dustin played here for almost three years uh, in the Tasting Room. And Dustin will be here on Saturday. Hasn't been uh, back. He was down in, in uh, Southern California being a rock star. But he plays his own music. That's yeah. what I like about yeah. him. You know, it's not he's not covering other bands. He's yeah. he's writing his own music and that I mean it's just original. Yeah, and then you know, I I, I, I go to this cool church called New Vintage and it's this really cool church. Well this last Sunday, out walks Dustin and plays for the for the church. Really? Yeah, and he's got he, he looks <laughs> he looks like Jesus. He's got a beard and long hair now and but he can play and sing and he's he's just wonderful he's a real treat and a nice young man and uh, uh you'll like him a lot so uh you've got that going on and then a week from this friday is the first of uh four right because you go june july august time you got four uh summer fest summer fest is a festival i'm sorry well june july august september four then Oh, it's all right. It's okay. It's uh, four first Fridays, the first Friday of each month, starting in June. Uh, so uh, you can get your tickets by going to our website, uh, sellersofsonoma.com, which is where you are now watching the show. If you look up to the right, there's a little icon for Summerfest. You can buy your tickets, uh, 20 bucks um, or $40, and you get two glasses, and you get 10 tickets, and you get four extra by ordering on, online. So there's a great way to save a bunch of money. Uh, what is the event? They close the street right out here, and they have a uh, live band out, out there. Yep. Right? And then they'll have uh, food, wine food tasting. Food and wine tasting, beer. Shops are all open. It's actually a, a, a nice family event because yeah. you can bring the kids, and, you know, it's just a very nice atmosphere. And you can bring the dogs. I mean, people have asked us <laughs> in, the, in the past. You know, we're, we're not asking you to bring your dog, but, but you can. So uh, if they're part of your family, but a great event, a lot of fun. Um, it's summertime at its best, man. That's a, that's a cool event. First Friday of each month, starting in June. Uh, get your tickets uh, at uh, at our at our website. And also, another event coming up in July. Those of you and I and I'll get a flyer out as well. We'll start promoting this now. Is the barbecue? That's in July. All right, so Russ, what do you think of the barbecue? Tell me, I, tell them what that what that's all about. Well, you're going to go to this pu beautiful ranch. You're going to go in. You're going to try a lot of great wines. They also have beer there. Yeah, they've they had Lagunitas in the past, and yeah. then their cigars. And you go in. You got a ticket. And you go to all these various places. They they give you a cigar, and you can fire it up right there. And there's a lot of celebrities that go to it. I've seen uh, Guy Fiera, um, Larry Allen, the football player, just got inducted to the Hall of Fame. It's just a great experience and a great time, and it's well worth it, I'm telling you. It's uh, just the cigars in themselves are worth the price of admission. Yeah, tickets are, are 150 but that includes, you know, probably, you'll probably walk away with 20 cigars. Oh, yeah. Or more. And those are all $10 cigars, easily. Yeah. So, th I mean, that's one of the coolest events. And the first one we went to, you went with me the first time, right? It was hotter than heck. <laughs> no, the one... The, well, the one over at the... Luther Burbank. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was so warm that you had to chill your reds. Yeah, I did. I, I had all these cool wines from Pine Ridge, and they were expensive, too. I had like $80, $90 bottles of wine. I had some really pricey stuff, man, and it was baking out there, and we stuck them in the freaking cooler. Otherwise, you, they, you weren't going to enjoy them. Yeah. It was but, so warm. But that was our first experience of that event, and that was like, that shocked me. I had no idea that was... And this has been going on for 16 years. This is the 16th year that they've done this event. And that's at uh, uh, Sarah Vineyard? No, no. It's over at uh, 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 
Uh, what the heck? It's o it's over at uh, what's the what's that place over in Alexander Valley? It's called Red Rock. Uh, oh, geez, I got a metal It'll, before the broadcast. So I'll come up with the name. It, it's right over there in Alexander Valley, just past uh, White Oak. Uh, so not Hannah. River Red Red Rock. What's the? It's. Oh my gosh, I have a mental block on the. I've been there a million times. And it, no, it's not. River Rock's the nail, but that's what I keep Rage? saying. No. no, 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 it's 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 just past uh, White Oak on the right-hand side. So it well, used to be a brick facade, and then they built no. a, a winery behind it. Wilson owns it. And that, that, anyway, it's a cool spot. Don't worry about it. I'll show you where it, it's very cool. Alexander Valley, awesome, awesome location. It's going to be really, really fun. So don't forget about, about those. All right. All right, this, now again, when I, when I look at the wine club shipment, I think about the producer, I think about the time of the year, and then I think about a wine that many of you have not seen. And uh, three of the four wines in here, no one's, I haven't had them out in shipments. This is the coolest Syrah you're gonna see out Zin. of Zin. I mean, uh, Zinfandel that you're gonna see out in the market, thank you. See, Russ is here for a reason. He's here to keep me on track. Straight and narrow. Yeah. Now, uh, so I'm going to pour this. Uh, here, I'll pour this in, in this glass here. Let me tell you how unique this particular wine is. This is Bono's 2008. It's a new label for him. It's his Vintner's Reserve. And it's all Zinfandel. It's 2008 from Dry Creek Valley. But here's what he did. It's 34 months in brand new French oak. But here's what he did. Wow. It's a big sucker, man, it's big. Here's what he did. His normal program is to put his wines in there for 22 months. That's his normal program. So he did that with this wine. For 22 months he had them in brand new French oak and then he transferred them into a new set of oak for the remainder of 34 months. So he got a double, what I would call a double oak. I, I've never heard of that. I don't even know anyone that's ever done. I've never heard anybody do that. Number one, here's what you have to remember, gang. That's really expensive to do that. Because you are burning, you are burning new barrels for another 10 months or another year. You're burning new barrels again. Again, eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars a barrel. That's a lot of dough. You're, you're getting, you're getting up there, man. Um, and he only made uh, ninety cases. Okay, so we're a barrel of wine. Those of you that don't know, we'll give you about twenty-three and a half cases of wine per barrel. So we're talking just shy of four barrels. Is what we're talking about. Four barrels. Four. One, one, two, three, four. Okay, this is a wine, number one, because he aged it so long in new oak, you have an opportunity to lay this down for quite a time. You could put another seven to ten years on this, no problem whatsoever. Um, it is, it's a, oh, the cherries and all the pretty stuff coming right out of the nose of this. Holy Toledo, I love this. Now, now let me make sure that I get this correct here. It, the cheese that we picked is a wrapped cheddar raw cheese. Uh, they call it a fish, 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 Fiscal, fiscalini? fiscalini bandage wrapped. In other words, it's wrapped cheese. Uh, it's cheddar raw. And so you want something that can really handle this because this is a pretty big wine. So let's see how we do. Oh, I like that. I had a little taste of this today. I want you to sample it. This was really nice. Let's see how we did it. I like this gal. This gal at the at at, at Oliver's was really good. She knew her stuff, and we were just talking about, she didn't have what I wanted on my list, and she said, get this. This will work. Now, she's never tasted our wines or anything. 
She nailed this. Yeah, that's delicious. I may have to bring her a bottle of wine. And say, hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, right. Say, my why God, not? That was right on the money. Mm. Well, first of all, hats off to John Benberry from Bonneau Wines. He made a really nice Zinfandel, right? I mean, I, and and look, gang, I we have nine vintners here. We probably have um, 70, 80 different wines in the room at any given time, okay? That's, that's a lot. But there's hundreds of wineries in the valley, hundreds. And I can choose from a lot. But I'll tell you what, I'd go in a blind tasting against anybody in the valley in Absolutely. Zinfandel, and I would smoke them with this. And this, is, this, to me, is a very young wine. I don't think, I don't think, uh, I think you can really put some time on this. I mean, I am, I'm impressed. What do you think? I mean, you tell it's delicious. You think. No, I, mean, I think that you're absolutely right. I've had a lot of Zins. It's one of my favorite varietals, and that is right there yeah. with the best of them. So the, the cheddar, they call it a raw cheese, cheddar raw cheese, right on the money with that wine. So those are four very cool wines. We, we, we picked uh, three, four, five different cheeses, and any any of the any of the cheeses uh, that we picked for the pinots. And again, I'll have them up on the on the website when you guys uh, look at the selection of wines for the shipment. I'll have these listed. You could have easily picked any of those three; would have gone very nice with that with that pinot. Oh, absolutely. And and some of the cheeses now you, you know this. Some of these cheeses were a little pricey. I have to tell you, they weren't. They weren't cheap. They were. They were. You know, uh, they were a little on the. A couple of those were north of nineteen bucks a pound. That's that's a that's a high, that's a hefty price. Yeah, but you're not putting it on a cheeseburger. No. Well, you could though. I'd be okay with that. <laughs> and you're just you're just combining it with your wine drinking experience. So you're yes. not taking. You know, it's not like you're taking big, or a fondue or something like that. Yeah. You're just having a little piece to go with. To complement the wine tasting, yeah, and it's and, delicious. Yeah, and and <clears throat> I have to, I have to tell you, um, all of those are worthy. Those were all very nice cheeses, and uh, and so it really makes a difference when you guys go out shopping. You're going to have to find your favorite little spot that really know a little bit about the cheese because the one I thought today, the big one, the big chain, they didn't have. Boy, I was so disappointed. I can't tell you, and and. Uh, you know, I leave my I leave a lot of this up to my wife. Uh, those of you that know, because she's a lot better at this than I am. I'm not that Goes good at saying. Um, but uh, I tell you, they picked they picked some damn nice cheeses, and I I wouldn't have an issue with any of those. Mm -mm. Um, and, and again, that's not my thing. I'm not you know I'm kind of a simple guy. You know, well to a degree. I don't know, if you talk to my wife, she might not say that. But anyway. Um, yeah, that, that, they, those were all very good. So we'll post uh, the names of each of the cheeses and, and uh, uh, where you can get them locally in, in your local market. I think they're similar uh, named and they're, they're, they're available and they'll, they'll go really well. I also have a nice little, um, I'll send you a copy of the sheet that I used that showed each wine and it showed the suggested cheeses. Yeah. And, and so you can try at home what goes with certain wines. Um, uh, oh, on the on the Bono, just so that you guys know, retail price on that is fifty five. Seller Club members get that at forty six seventy five. It's on the high end of the of the Zen world, but you know what, gang? So what? I mean, come on, he made less than four barrels, brand new French oak. There's a lot of cost in this. This is not cheap. It's not. This is not wood chips. You know. Uh, question. Go ahead. Brad would like to know um, how the, much he wine. He wants to see that bottle, doesn't he? He does. <laughs> he does. He, he wants does. to know how much wine is in a Magnum. Oh, a well, Magnum is, is uh, uh, one and a half liters, which is two 750s. Nice. So, um, yeah, Karina, you should, you should, you should go, go get that, go get that, that Magnum. I, I have to show that off because that's probably the coolest bottle. And because uh, Kevin came home, my son, Kevin, who works for Chateau Montalena, which, uh, which Bo Barrett is married to Heidi Barrett. But Kevin came uh, over to the house one night and goes, you don't have the Magnum, do you? And I go, a pirate? And he goes, yeah. 
I go, no way. There's no way that I got. Bring both sizes. Bring both sizes so he can see the difference. Because, and I, he was teasing me, you know. And then I, I emailed Heidi, and she was out of town. So she didn't get back to me right away. And then uh, Jim Barrett had passed away. And then I thought, God, this thing's getting lost in the sauce. I'm not going to see this. And then finally they got back to me. Um, but I got to tell you, uh, first of all, okay, all right, Brad, all right, those of you that have the pirate wine, this is La Serena, and I'm going off the script here, but this is, this is a great bottle of wine all by itself, okay? It's very cool. Do not judge this as cutesy. Brad, will, anybody that's watching right now that's had this wine knows this is not a cutesy wine, although it's in a cutesy bottle, no doubt. The, the tasting notes are done in pirate speak, so it says, Aye, mateys, I got Cabernet Sauvignon, and it's got all the listing of the wines. Very cute. Um, but definitely not cutesy. This is a big sucker, okay? It's good marketing, too. Oh, it's the best. Because a lot of places that you go to, we've been to a lot of these wineries where they um, have these really cute pictures on the bottle and they got all these things and all this stuff, and the wine's cutesy. So it's kind of like, eh, who cares? You know? Not memorable. Yeah, you just go, whatever, it's tourist stuff. Um, this is not. This is real. This is the real deal. Okay. Okay. Now, Brad, that's cool. That is really cool. <laughs> Come on. How many of these do you want to have? You got to have that on your shelf, dude. First of all, you don't drink it right away. And here's the reason why. Whenever you get larger formats, they're going to age slower. And because of that, you're going to end, have an opportunity to put some years on this that you normally couldn't do in a 750 bottle. So you can really age them, and you can put a bunch of time on it, and man, are you going to enjoy this bottle. <laughs> I wish they had a 3-liter version. That would be almost crazy. But um, amazing. This is very cool. There are only 18 of these. That's all I got. And... They're just going to sell out. I'm just telling you, it's going to be the hottest thing going. They're 150. They're worth every penny, and that is if you want to give someone a cool gift. Well, how cool would that be, Russ? I, mean, I think that that's something that people would like to receive as a wedding gift or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Instead of a toaster or some <coughs> easy bake oven or something. Jeez, my God. You know, there's nothing better than that. So this is very, very cool. The pirate has has arrived. And then we only have 18 of those. But if you want a great bottle of wine, man, that is pretty cool. But I had to share that. We're so excited. I just think that's the coolest buy out there. So uh, the Pirate, yeah. Okay, Brad, how many do you want? And, and um, well, we'll I'll, I'll also give you preferred shipping on that, too, if you go with these. If you buy these, I'll, I'll get you the absolute best, best inside price on shipping the the magnums because they have to be shipped, you know, special because they're they're odd sized. They don't fit. Brad said all. he's going to order on Friday. Thank <laughs> you. We love you. We love that. That's so awesome. Well, let's pull. Let's pull Brad's name out of here. That would be really cool. So Russell, go ahead. Pull, pull in here. Get dig in there and get 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 us a, a name. Let's see if we can get a winner, or or somebody that I know that isn't watching, so I can really give them a hard time. <laughs> but <laughs> I always love that. Jason, Jason Barker, Jason Barker, five. 541 area code. 541 area code. Jason Barker could be. Jason Barker, you have won four bottles of wine. But if you're not tuned in, you get an email. And man, are you going to be pissed? Go on one more time before we, before we close here. All right. All right. All right. Okay, this person was in on 413 of this year fairly recent Benny Barcielos Barcielos 510 area code so that's uh, that's Bay Area stuff isn't it? East Bay East Bay right Benny Barcelos you are gonna be so excited when I send you that email whoops and it says what an email says <laughs> when, I, when I put it there you you won the contest almost <laughs> so, anyway, you'll learn because we have fun on our show and you learn stuff and we talk and we drink wine. And uh, you drink wine, those of you that are watching, you drink along with us, so that really works. 
Um, all right. So uh, recap. Let me just tell you, uh, this weekend, live music Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with Dustin Saylor coming back in the house. Hasn't been here for quite a while. Uh, Dustin, he looked good, man. He looked good on Sunday. That looked awesome, man. Uh, very impressive. Nice young man. Uh, all three of those musicians are fabulous. Great time. You want to have dinner, you can have it right here. You can order from Jack and Tony's and from Sushi to Die For. They'll deliver it right to your spot. You can order from the other places to go. Or you can order the cheese plate here and enjoy it with the wine. That's right. And I may have some of this other cheese left over. Maybe you can have a real deal. Who knows? Uh, so we've got that going on. Summerfest is the week after that. Lobster lunch is the 29th and August 17th. Um, doesn't get any better. This is wine country, and that's how we do it. So I want to uh, thank uh, all my vloggers for tuning in, all the people that watch our show on a regular basis. Thank you to my buddy Russ for coming in and tasting wine and figuring out the cheese. Yep, and, cheers. And uh, it's all fun, and thank you. This is where you discover wine one sip at a time here at Cellars of Sonoma. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next week, 6 o'clock, Tuesday night.